This is from way back, when Silk Road 1 was still going strong. I was looking for a certain substance, but couldn't find it in my part of the world for a decent price. This was really frustrating because it had been plentiful and easy to find in the past, but for whatever reason, things were dry and people were starting to look to alternatives. I was told about Tor and the Onion Rotary and how to access the Silk Road. For anyone that doesn't know what I'm talking about, Tor is like Google Chrome for the dark web. It's the program that you need to access the unique web page URLs that only have those websites. Silk Road was a dark web marketplace where you could buy and sell literally anything to one another. You had to use Bitcoin and you had to trust a backwater system to get you what you paid for. The whole experience is totally surreal to look back on, but probably one of the coolest aspects in the early 2000s. Tour was called the Onion Rotary because it randomized your IP with every click of the mouse. So one minute it might say you were in Vermont, the next you were in Peru, and then Helsinki, you get the picture. It's an untraceable system, unless of course you underestimate the means of the system and can trace people, but that's a whole nother discussion entirely. So I got Tor and I got onto the dark web. I found myself on Silk Road. All seemed to be pretty straightforward, so I just made my post like I would on Craigslist or any other messaging board. Hi, looking for mushrooms, please respond. It was pretty much the gist of it. It felt sketchy and stupid, but out of options, I gave it a whirl. When I checked the next morning, I hadn't received any messages, and I pretty much wrote it off. The hell was I thinking anyway? But after a few days, someone did respond. They had an offer and requested to message me, which I accepted. We parlayed the details. Suddenly, I found myself agreeing to send this stranger around $800. This was way more than I originally planned on spending, but for whatever reason, I found a person I was talking to charming. Drug dealers seemed to have that effect on me, so that's how I knew this guy was legit. I only had $200 set aside for the purchase, so the additional $600 was biting into my rent and bill money. I had to convert all of it into Bitcoin, then ship it off to a random wallet address. Honestly, the whole thing felt pretty high tech and cool at the time. After payment, the guy agreed to ship me one ounce of mushrooms per week for six weeks. The delayed nature of it kept it safer, more secure, and would allow me to make more sales over time. It all made sense in my head. Lo and behold, the delivery never arrives. Two weeks goes by, nothing and the guy's account vanishes from my contact history. That charm I felt, it was that of a scam artist. I just couldn't tell the difference through a computer screen. I felt stupid, as there was nothing I could do, but, but the real problem was, I was planning on selling that first shipment to cover the rent money I'd spent. I wouldn't be able to cover my ass in two weeks when the first of the month came. I had all kinds of problems to deal with in real life now, so I did the one thing that I could do, to get revenge on the dark web. I left that guy a bad review on the Silk Road forum. I said he scammed me, had probably scammed many others, and then not to give him any money. Do not conduct business of any kind with this guy. You will definitely steal your money. After that, I did my best to forget, and just start hustling to get the bills covered. It's grueling, but I did find some side gigs and start filling up the coffers before the next month. I come home one day, and I just want to relax veg out on the computer for a little bit. I remember that whole dark web ordeal and decide to go take a look at my Silk Road post. And that's when I see I have a new message and went along like this. Hello, I'm a reputable vendor here on Silk Road. I saw your post this morning about the scam artist user. I had an exchange with him a few days ago wherein he also tried to scam me. So I'm taking actions against him. I've used one of my alternative accounts to sell him several ounces of MDMA. He's already paid for the product, and what I put in the mail was a quarter pound of sweet sugar crystals and a sticky note with a frowny face with his full name written on it. Is there anything else you'd like this user to suffer? I had no idea who this person was that was messaging me, but they were allowing me to come up with consequences for that guy. It was some kind of honor among thieves, and honestly, I found it enthralling. What a message to receive, that the Silk Road system was self-correcting. Unfortunately, I didn't really have any creative ways off the top of my head to make him suffer, so 
I didn't make any suggestions. The vendor told me that was okay. The user would have lots to deal with in the coming weeks. Then he asked for my Bitcoin wallet address and the amount owed from the scam. I thought long and hard about my answer. Part of me wanted to lie, see if I could turn a profit from the whole ordeal. But another part of me was sure this person could find out the truth. It was the dark web. These people could find out anything. If I lied, it might cost me more in the end. But I just told him the truth, which even then sounded pretty steep. He gave me the okay and said to be back to me soon. No way. It was unbelievable, but my bad review was actually going to get me my money back. After the experience that I had, I wasn't really sure any of this was legit. When I woke up the next morning, though, all the money had been returned to my wallet. I wish I could explain the sensation that I had, like my spirit had been refilled. I believed in humanity, and of course, carried a deep respect for the dark web community after this. While randomly clicking around tour one night, I found a site with a riddle and a text box to enter the answer. After figuring out the puzzle, it took me another page that had a message to decode and another text box. Basically, every page was a puzzle and it got harder every time. I was 15 years old and not very smart with those kind of things, so I found a forum where other people had discovered it too and were all talking about it. Apparently on the final page, it displayed a date and a quote from Alice in Wonderland. I believe it was just a site just to be some sort of entertainment for very experienced decoders and programmers, but there's also some speculation. It might be a hacker recruiting site, similar to the Cicada 3301, but either way, it creeped me out a lot. Despite all these fears though, I couldn't look away. I was big into breaking secret codes, and this seemed to be a brain buster. The forum I found became incredibly handy, almost like a video game guide help me figure out some of the later puzzles. You see, I wanted to do them all on my own. Any good code breaker knows that there's possibly more than one way to solve a puzzle, and the results could yield different outcomes. I'd spent a few hours after school each day, trying to figure out the latest riddle. It didn't take long. Soon, I was at the same page everyone else had arrived at. A date, and a quote. But there's something else too. This disgusting bloody pig mask sitting on the end of a table next to the text. Maybe it wasn't even a mask. It could have been a legit pig head severed right off the body. I mean, it was that gory looking. There were a few people in the forum claiming that there were additional levels after that one that I had already reached, but the vast majority of the decoders denied this and said the text box with the quote and date was the end of this puzzle. I didn't know who to believe though. But having a lot of free time and already being invested, I decided to keep at it. Maybe there was more. I reached out to one of the conspirator guys, asked him how to move beyond the pig head page. He didn't respond at first, but after some prodding, he came back pretty hostile with all kinds of threats. This guy didn't see the decoding as a puzzle. He saw it as a race to some kind of prize, so he wanted to keep his progress to himself. He said he'd hack me, turn my life upside down if I bothered him again. This only fueled my interest though. As you probably figured out, I was a supreme nerd throughout high school, somewhat versed with the dark web. I had some smoke and mirrors in place to mask my IP from unwanted investigation. As the week went on, a few more decoders moved on from the last level. I was one of them. I don't want to get too deep into what the puzzle was, but, but we figured out that there was a code hidden in the date and the quote on the screen. If you typed in the missing characters, it sent you to another screen. The next screen had a question in a text box and a timer starting at three minutes and the rest of the bloody corpse of the pig. Now I knew it wasn't a mask. It was a real series of photos of a decapitated animal. The gruesome nature of the photo made it incredibly hard to focus on the puzzle at hand. The timer made it even worse. When it hit zero, it kicked you back to the latest puzzle text box where you had to wait 24 hours to input the secret characters. Here's the rub. Every time you returned and went into the next puzzle, the timer was 30 seconds shorter. You were only given six attempts to get it figured out. And if you spent all six tries, that was it. 
puzzle game over. This one took the form a little longer to figure out, as no one wanted to be the martyr and sacrifice their attempts. It also really cut off what little communication and cooperation was left between users. After 9 or 10 days, people started dropping like flies, unable to stay away from giving the next screen a shot. People were going nuts in the forum area after they lost. I tried to be as patient as I possibly could, spent night after night trying to piece it together on paper rather than waste my tries. It wasn't good enough though. Eventually, after conversing with a few puzzlers that were still helpful, I decided to give it a run, see if it worked out for me. I didn't really believe this would end in fame or riches, so I didn't think I'd lose out on anything. It was just a fun pastime for me. Needless to say, I failed, quickly at that. All the stuff I came up with on paper crashed and burned as soon as my screen was frozen on the previous puzzle, doomed to only lurk in the forum now. It was whatever. I hung around for a few more days to see if anyone passed, and got bored and moved on. The dark web is a deep place. There are lots of other things to see. In my defense, I didn't totally fail. I actually saved my last attempt just in case anything came to me. Or in the event, the answer got posted somewhere. Still, I forgot about the whole thing as I moved on to other strangeness on that web. Not even a week went by when I got an email from an encrypted account. And I don't mean that message itself was encrypted, although it probably was. I mean the actual email account itself was unreadable untraceable. I had no way of responding because to my email sender, the account that sent it didn't exist. I had a bad feeling the second I saw that mysterious point of origin. It had one simple message. Hey, keep at it. You were really close and we'd like to see you succeed. Give that last try a shot from your friends on the other side. I started to sweat before I even finished reading it. All the precautions I took were meaningless. Someone from the dark web had found my personal email account and then reached out to me. This meant they knew my name, house address, really everything about me. Privacy was non-existent. Suddenly I found myself afraid of the electronics inside my house. This was when my interest in the dark web really soured. I quit with it altogether. I didn't really do anything online after that. I'd unplug my Wi-Fi as soon as I was home and if no one was using it. I changed my passwords to things that I had to use, like stuff for school. I was so nervous after that email that I could hardly sleep at night, just waiting for my life to fall apart. What would it start with? Another email? A phone call? A text message? It came in the way I would least expect it. The mail. I came home from school one day to find something waiting for me on the kitchen counter. It looked like junk mail at first your typical you've won type of envelope. It wasn't until I saw the symbol stand beside the heading that I realized what it was. It was an image of a pig's head. I tore it open with dread, tremoring throughout my entire body. Part of me hoped it was full of anthrax and would just kill me right there. I would have been lucky that that happened. Inside I found a photo and a small white card that read, you work so hard. The picture was me, hard at work on the last puzzle in front of my computer. It looked like the picture had been taken through my webcam or, or some program. I was leaned back in my desk chair, staring at the possibilities I'd written out on paper. It was a gut-wrenching thing to see. All the notions I'd been safe were washed away in an instant. I took the envelope and its contents to the fireplace and burned it right there on the spot sweat dumping down my body as I watched it turn to ash. Nothing more ever came from it, but the fact that it happened changed the way I looked at the world. I don't do much online, and when I do, it's limited, through various layers of security. No one is safe anywhere on the web. I'll never forget hearing about the dark web and all the crazy stuff that you could find on there. My friends and I in high school loved the legends of the internet, spent a lot of time cruising places like Reddit and 4chan for weird stuff, both old and new. We weren't really after anything specific, we just liked the shock factor aspect and the unpredictability of what you might find. 
I think my generation was really drawn to this kind of behavior because of things like LimeWire. I mean, we were the first wave of kids to be handed electronics, an internet connection, and then just left to our own interests. This was the first era where a person could hear something and then go to the web and learn more about it. Whereas many of us were just downloading songs and music videos, others had learned you could pretty much download anything from LimeWire. This turned the program into a kind of weird roulette where you never knew what you might see. One minute you think you're downloading a My Chemical Romance song, and then it's actually a decapitation video. So as you can imagine, we were pretty fascinated with the notion of the dark web. At first, it was just something we talked about, random stuff we'd heard and rumors we made up, or horror stories that we read online. All of it kindled a fascination that just wouldn't go away. Not until we saw it. There's no other way to describe it. The dark web is the last frontier. It's the one place a person can truly explore and possibly see something no other human will. We started learning about what a trip would require. None of us wanted to use our own devices to make that journey, so we entertained getting a burner laptop. Of course, being school-aged kids, we didn't have a lot of disposable money like that. The urge to take the plunge was just overwhelming one day that I didn't care. It's not like going on the dark web is illegal. It's all about what you do when you get there. I told everyone that I was just going to figure it out with my computer at home. It took me a couple of days worth of research, but I got it figured out. I'm not going to lay it out so you can make the same mistakes I did though. I'll just say it requires a special browser to access. If you really want to go, you'll have to learn the rest yourself. I made the proper modifications, downloaded the software I needed, and then started experimenting. Getting to the dark web is actually a lot easier than they say. The hard part is navigating it. There aren't any URLs like the regular internet. You have to know the highly specific web addresses in order to find the site. This prevents just any Cracker Jack from getting onto the dark web and taking a tour of some potentially seedy places. Not to be deterred, I went to my old friend 4chan. The anonymous users there had some pointers for me, mostly to tell me to stay away, but after a night of asking and bartering, I was finally given a copy-paste link to a list of dark web URLs. There were thousands of them. I remember feeling lightheaded when I saw it. I couldn't even imagine all the different crazy stuff that lay archived before me. So I started the same way anyone would, one link at a time. I can't even express to you how disappointed I was when I dropped that very first link in and it took me to a dead website. I thought I'd been tricked, totally ripped off. The first 10 or 20 links were all the same dead website. Still, I wasn't going to give up. I spent a year of my high school life talking about the wonders of this place. I couldn't just tuck tail and say, nah, guess I was wrong. There's a whole lot of nothing. I did what any sensible young man would do. I jumped ahead in the links. In fact, I found the sketchiest looking one I could find and followed it. And this time, that website wasn't dead. It was some kind of online marketplace. And as you can imagine, all the items for sale weren't things you could buy in a store. I stumbled upon some kind of fetish site where you could buy urine. And I mean any kind in the world. It looked like the site mostly dealt with clean urine as the kind that would pass a drug test. I hit the mother load. I scrolled for a little while just to make sure I didn't miss anything. After all, I was an explorer. I needed to make an accurate report to my buddies. The rest of the night went by slow, as methodic research does. My friends were floored when I told them. They couldn't believe I'd actually found something and that I've done it all on my home computer. They kept asking me if I was crazy and if the FBI was monitoring my house yet. Despite all the crap talking, every single one of them wanted to see what I'd found. For a few weeks after this, my friends would come over after school, usually when my parents were at work. We tried random URLs from the copy paste list. The list itself was hosted on one of those old text sharing websites so anyone could make a change to the document at any given time. There'd be times where we'd watch someone delete a URL or type out a new one at the bottom. We actually had our own list going of websites we visited and websites that were dead. I can't even begin to tell you all the crazy stuff that we saw. It started with a weird urine website, but that was truly the tip of the iceberg. 
hell, that's just the kind of website you can find on the normal internet nowadays. Pee in bags, farts in jars, typical OnlyFans stuff. It's almost as if the depravity of the dark web has slowly bled into the normal internet over the last few years. Anyway, we moved on to cooler URLs. One week we explored another marketplace that conducted itself more as a forum. It wasn't goods that were being moved, but a service. The members of this forum claimed to be hitmen from a variety of backgrounds, all with different skill sets and different types of targets that they were comfortable killing. This last part varied greatly and it was reflected in the price tag. Average killers willing to kill average people were asking for about $20,000 in either American or Mexican currency. The higher prices were in the ballpark of $100,000 to $50K up front and then $50K after the kill was carried out. These were typically for the more high profile targets. The seller accepted only American or Russian currency. It was definitely mind blowing to see, but there was no way to actually verify any of this. Part of us was convinced that it was all just people role playing, just pretending to be what they said they were. We got curious, so we made an account on a Hitman forum. It didn't really require a whole lot. As you can imagine, less is more for a Hitman forum. It seemed to be a way just to network and then the actual details and money would be exchanged later, most likely in person. We perused the website, but we didn't find anything we considered proof that what we were seeing was actually real. While poking around the website though, a little blue bubble appeared in the top right corner of my screen. It kind of looked like an eyeball, but it was only the size of a pinky nail. I didn't think anything of it at first, honestly. I just thought it was something with the browser, like it needed an update or something, and just kept on exploring. It wasn't until we were done for the day and everyone was going home that I noticed it again. Even after closing the programs we used to surf the dark web, that little blue bubble was still in the top right corner, now set against my monitor background. I did everything I could to scrub the bubble from my computer, but to no avail. Restarts, long-term shutdown, antivirus scans, software purge, everything. It was a part of my computer, and I guess I just had to deal with it, which turned out to be not an issue. Being a young dumb kid, forgetting about the bubble is like second nature to me, and believe it or not, we kept on exploring the dark web, despite that little eye looking out at us. Another couple of weeks went by before we found a website that greatly interested all of us. It was a black market for hackers and data pirates. There are resumes for hackers on there, a list of things they could do for you, even some stuff they could teach you. It was like a hub for key logging and backdoor sneaking. For whatever reason, being on this website didn't scare us, even though this seemed to be the spot where the bad stuff would really happen. We hung around that website for a while until one day, that little blue bubble disappeared from the corner. We all looked at each other and laughed, letting the fright pass over us and then kept on exploring. The webpage grayed out, a text box popped up on the screen. We all started whooping and hollering as if we just finished a video game level, despite having no clue what we just stumbled upon. The message went something like this. Hello, I'm one of the administrators for this website. We log everyone who passes through the best to our ability, but I've continued to monitor your activity since your first appearance on our website. I've seen you on our servers every day, and I've come to the conclusion you have no interest in buying or using any of the services listed. I suspect even if you had an interest, you would have no way of paying for it because you're a group of high school kids who bit off more than you can chew. The guy went on to explain that we weren't in any kind of trouble and that the admin team didn't mind them looking around, but others would. Because of the sensitive nature of the website, lots of real hackers lurk just below the surface. And since I was on my home computer, using my family's internet without any kind of virus protection. My connection to the dark web was comparable to a flashing red sign with all of my personal information on it. I had no idea that my presence on each website was a flagship for people to come and take advantage of me. He then said if I took more precautions to protect my connection, I would be safe and secure in my exploring. He went on to ask if I had noticed a little blue bubble on my monitor screen. I typed back yes. It had been there for a week or two. The administrator explained that I picked up a hitchhiker on one of these dark websites 
and that the person was tracking everything I did. They couldn't see me through the screen or anything, but they could see everything I did on our home internet, likely in an attempt to blackmail us. The administrator explained that when he looked into my connection, he took the liberty of removing my hitchhiker. You should get off now if you know what's good for you, was the last message that I received from them. We all looked at each other with that same sense of disbelief. Being high school boys, we needed more than just a spooky message. One of my friends leaned over my shoulder and typed, How do we know this is legit? Anyone could be making this up. The admin proceeded to respond with my full name and address, the whole names of several other friends inside the room, the school that we all went to. We frantically closed out the browser, and I can tell you that I've never been on the dark web since. Our official merch store is finally here. If you want to support more of our channel, check out our merch shop. The link is in the description down below. See you on the next video.